Welcome to the workbench and welcome to another first impressions video all the way from Latvia. We have the Copper State Models, 132nd scale Newport 23 Royal Flying Corps. Let's have a look. First sprue, got our tailplane, rudder, fuselage pieces, some struts, some machine guns, some framing. All right. Very subtle stitching, molded, raised on the tailplanes and on the rudder. Looks very nice. Looks like. Fuselage sides, uh, looks better to have to tell once we get some primer on it. Might be a little bit of a sink mark there just from the molded structure in the inside, but that, I mean, sometimes that can't be helped. That would not be hard to fix a little bit of putty. Looks like some little rivet detail, I guess. I'm assuming that's the bulkhead or um, firewall, I should say. Struts. That's the uh, Vickers machine gun. That looks very nice. Cooling jacket molded in two halves, so it's uh, hollow. The uh, aircraft ones, of course, are air-cooled, not water-cooled, like the land-based variant, although we won't be using that on these kits, on this kit. The Struts look very nice of the little brackets and everything molded in integral. The outer wing struts with the um, metal bands, those are very nice. Looks like the hub for the prop there. Be careful getting that out. Yeah, nice and clean. This is my first real look at a copper state kit, and so far, looks pretty good. Next sprue, our uh, forward fuselage, propeller. Ah, oh, the seat, nicely done, molded uh, open. Uh, there's probably photo etch options on the market, but uh, that does not look too bad. Got our Lewis machine guns with the um, heat sink stripped off. That looks really good. Ammo uh, drums look very nice. You get the two different uh, sizes. I think they came in 47 and 90 rounds. So typically, they'd have a, the, the bigger one loaded, and then they'd reload with the smaller ones. Beautiful stitching molded into the pieces here. Very, very nice. Plastic's very nice and smooth. No, no texture at all. Ah, okay. Here we have the wheels with the cover. And there's a small hole, which I assume would be for a valve stem or something, but what looks like the, he's kind of molded the spokes in where you might be tempted to see it through the hole. That's, that's a little attention to detail, quite clever. Very nice detail on the inside of these engine cones. I'm assuming that's supposed to represent like tongue and groove wood or maybe some sort of insulation with the, uh, the diagonal lines there. Very clean, very sharp, like that. It's again beautiful stitching molded in. Propeller looks nice and clean and curiously square cut, but uh, that looks nicely molded. Little bit of a mold line in the middle, but that can't be helped. 
That'll look really good. Get that painted up with some, uh, make it look like wood. Take some cockpit controls, which wouldn't be a lot in these aircraft. A little bit of bolt detail around these panels. And if you decide to leave these open, he's actually got the holes where the fastening screws would go in. That's, that's attention to detail. Well done, Edgar. We got our full span lower wing and our upper wing split into left and right. Port and starboard, perhaps we should say. More, more very nice stitching detail. Ribs, very subtle. Look to be straight. Yeah, that's very nice. Subtle little bit of texture on there. So, I mean, these were fabric, so that looks good. Very nice. Upper wings, once again, look really good. Got the ribs well, well done. It's hard to tell if there's a little bit of a scallop in between, or it's just that the ribs are raised, but that'll look really nice. Uh, two different center sections. I believe that'd be for the British ones with the upper wing gun or the French ones that uh, didn't have that. Two different types of cowling. Those both look pretty good. A little, little bit of flash, but negligible. That's nothing to, uh, nothing to write home about. Yeah, nice and sharp, very crisp. And nice big slots in the outer wings that'll slide over those tabs. That's nice, gonna be nice and secure. Hopefully those won't be flopping around. We got our engine, of course, uh, rotary engine in the new port so the whole engine turned around the, uh, the crankcase so engine and propeller a lot of torque so typically rotary engine aircraft would turn really good one way and not so good the other yeah. cooling fins are nicely molded maybe not as sharp as they could be but still look really good First we got our, I believe it has to be the uh, exhaust and push rods, molded one. The tops of the cylinders, I guess cylinder heads are all molded separately. That looks really good, a few other little bits there. Yeah, that's a respectable looking engine. Uh, hopefully there won't be much of a seam to deal with, although Buried in the cowling, you're probably not going to notice, though you will want to try to get rid of a little bit of a mold seam on the push rods and whatnot there. So just carefully clean that up and carefully get that off the sprue. But that is some very, very clever molding. Very, very good. And the last sprue, in the third center wing section. Uh, another outer wing strut with, uh, I guess, an early version of a pitot tube on it. Some other panels. And a couple more stripped down Lewis guns. Yep, and this, this sprue specifically is for the Royal Flying Corps kit. So these would be the unique parts. Uh, this kit does share sprues with the, uh, the, I believe, the 21 and the 17 as well. The uh, Newport 23 was simply a, just a production variant of the 17 where they had to move some rigging and some structural supports around. Yeah, that's very fine. You can almost hear a very fine patterning on, I'm assuming that's some sort of hose or tubing. That's, that's very nice. Yeah. Very crisp, very nice molding. Uh, maybe a little bit soft here and there, but overall quite nice. So yeah. Yeah, those plastic parts look really good. Next, we've got, we have a little punched piece of acetate film here. So that would be for the 
little tiny windshield. That'll look okay. And we have our decals. And right here we got printed by Cartograph, so these should have no issues whatsoever. Fantastic color. Registration looks good. They don't look overly thick. Nice glossy finish on them. These look really, really nice. Hardly any clear carrier around the edge. And even, even on some of these large letters, even the just the tiniest amount of clear to hold them all together, those you should not have any issues with silvering on these decals because there's hardly any extra clear carrier on those. Those look very, very nice. And all helpfully labeled left and right as needed. Even some beautiful little metallic logos. I would assume that'd be for the propeller, for the engine. Can almost, can almost read those. Those are really nice. Yeah, these, these are some of the nicest decals I've seen. It'll, very, very impressive. Wow. And last but not least, little Freda photo etch. So we got some, I would assume, seat belts and some other little pieces. Just enough to add a little bit more detail. And that looks pretty good. Not actually very thin. So those should be very nice. Of course, belts, you do like to heat those up and allow them to bend a little bit easier. But those look very nice looking photo etch. I would assume that's probably done in house. So. Yeah, Copper State's uh, taking care of business. Really good. Okay, now, find out how we put it all together. I, this is one thing Copper State really kind of hits it out of the park with is these instruction manuals made to look like a, an original manual that you might have gotten with the real airplane, like, you know, not to be carried in aircraft, you know. Cool. A little bit of history on the Newport 23. Nice guide for all your parts. Color callouts. And I'll give Edgar bonus points. Does not reference any one particular brand gives you specific names so you can you know if you like Tamiya you like Vallejo you like AK whatever you like pick out appropriate colors in your favorite brand you're not having to try to convert X brand paint into Y brand paint and then convert that into Z brand paint because there's no other conversion so that's nice and handy little guide for all the various symbols Step one, got a little tachometer. Calls out for uh, various rigging for the internal structures. And gives you nice little suggestions along the way. Now these are very reminiscent of the Wingnut Wings instructions, giving you nice colorful 3D renders. You know, previous, and let's see each subsequent step molded in different colors. Nice close-ups of even the small parts and how to paint them. That, that's really nice. Yeah, those are, these are probably renders taken from the actual 3D program that they used to design the kit. So you know that this should be very good quality. Engine supports, air, yeah. little things like this, drill holes and air induction tubes for a better looking model. Engine crankshaft, firewall, tachometer, a few 
fuel tanks. Yeah, th these instructions are broken down very, very well. So, you know, if you built some some kits, some of the, the older Ravel kits and Dragon kits, the instructions are you need a you need a a higher education in forgotten languages to decipher some of those sometimes, but these are very well laid out. Even had a you know, re rigging up the rudder bar. Yeah, every every step broken down into the smallest parts and in how to paint those small parts. These these guys, Edgar and all you guys at Copper State, you're uh, you're punching above your weight class here. These are really nice. Nice heavy paper, full color. Yeah, just look at the, just looking at the the way that cockpit goes together. That's very very nice. Yeah, and there's your photo etch seat belts going on with instructions how to paint them. More rigging guides. Even, and even just these handy little tips, you know, check part alignment during assembly, check angle and position of seat, make sure to drill holes for control cables. So these, these guys aren't assuming that you're a multiple year, many hundreds of models experienced builder. If you're coming at this hobby fresh, they've laid this out that you can get this looking really good even with little experience. More, more rigging guides. Yeah, these instructions are, these are phenomenal. These are, I mean, even Tamiya could learn from these. Like, these are very, very nice. Stalling plates, more control cable guides, tail skid, fuselage all going together here. And they give you the upper structure for the fuselage and do not paint if you're installing the top cover so I guess the idea is you could have this airplane all taken apart in some sort of construction or maintenance scene that's that's very nice a little cockpit goes on to the lower wing check alignment of lower wing and the rear section of fuselage, tailplane, struts, rudder, more rigging. So if you don't like rigging, this might not be the best kit for you. Okay, yep, these engine, these forward panels, these are plywood. So that inner structure would be uh, diagonal wood strips. Here's your windshield with the acetate. Okay, and uh, on these ones, we're not using the cowl mounted Vickers machine guns. So you patch in the cowling with another piece and they say, should be filled and leveled with filler. You don't need to hide completely, but may be slightly visible. So obviously they would have just patched that on the real airplane. The fabric, I guess. Top cowling, windshield. See, even the littlest tiny piece is called out for in the picture, in the description. Interplane struts with the, some more rigging wires. Tubular gun sight. Yeah, that's your three, three parts with the ailerons. Add ailerons after applying paint and decals. So they specifically call out, you leave those off. The, the decals are split so that the part goes onto the aileron. Cabane struts, the oldest site. Stalling the upper wing. 
uh, that, that wing should go on pretty well because we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points of contact, so that should line up pretty good. Undercarriage. Yep. So there's the little hole in the hut in the the cover lines up with the little molded in spokes. So when you look through, it actually looks like you've got spoked wheels in there. That's that's a great little attention to detail. Undercarriage glue in. More rigging callouts. Got our engine going together. The cylinder, cylinder heads, push rods, the induction pipes. That's what those are. The ignition distributor. And I call it here, so it'll give you a guide for wiring the, uh, the ignition leads. And there's putting the engine into place in the firewall. Uh, two different cowlings, depending on which marking scheme you go with. So you'll want to pick your paint scheme so you know which parts you're going to be using. Control levers. Little pieces to be removed. Yeah, here's our, our supports for the, the upper Lewis gun with the control cables going to the gun. And, uh, and you can mount the machine gun in its lowered position or in its raised position. There's a famous picture of Billy Bishop sitting in the cockpit of his new port with the gun pulled down. Have your Typical fighter ace glamour shot. In fact, you could fire the machine gun from the lowered position. So if you were flying along and you spotted a, a Jerry airplane above you and you could get the drop on him, and you, kind of a almost an early interpretation of the German Schraga music that they put in the, uh, the night fighters in World War II. Yeah, that'll look really nice. Even little notes here, you know. Not clear if this cable should be there. In theory, it should help pull the Lewis back to the firing position. So, you know, they've done their research, but they've even said, you know, this probably would be here, you know, but we can't say for certain. So, you know, reloaded position. Once again, you know, we're not sure if this piece should be here, but it would probably be there. So you can, you know, make your pick. And the propeller, last thing. Yeah, that is that is most impressive. If they've if they've put as much time and effort into the the engineering and the tooling on the parts as much as they do for these instructions, this kit will fall together. This is you know when they take the time and the effort to put this much care into you know just the instructions and the packaging and everything like that, that that shows that these guys really care about what they're doing. This is, these are very, very nice. Very nice. And on to our, now you've got two, three, four, five, six paint schemes in this kit. However, it is the last one that we're most excited about for Captain William Avery, Billy Bishop. Third highest scoring fighter ace of the First World War. And not only was he good, he was Canadian too. So his characteristic blue-nosed Newport with the... Now this B-1566, this was the aircraft used on his infamous aerodrome raid in which he won the Victoria Cross. Um, the... C5 markings. There is some debate about whether his airplane would have actually had these markings. So these are all marked with a question mark. So you can choose to put those on if you want to or not. But yeah, that's, uh, yeah, and all the, of course, we saw those decals. Those decals look fantastic. So this should be quite fun. I've seen some call-outs where his, and they give you the option here, either the aluminum dope or blue. Some sources show that his plane might have had blue wheels, so still a bit of debate. These old, the old pictures of these aircraft, sometimes it's really hard to tell what colors are what. Is it painted or is it just dirty? Yeah. And of course, if you're not a fan of Billy Bishop, you got a few other choices. 
Philip Fullard, William Campbell, Alan Scott, another high scoring ace, Mick Manick. I believe uh, him and Billy Bishop were uh, running head-to-head -head with highest score um, in the Royal Flying Corps for a short time. And Alfred Shepard. Now, there, there are definitely some definitely some nice colorful schemes in here. These, these ones with the uh, cow stripes are definitely reminiscent of the, the Flyboys movie, but uh, yeah. If you're in Canada and you're buying this kit, you're probably getting to do Mr. Billy Bishop's airplane. So, the new Copper State Newport 23. Definitely a nice looking kit. All the parts, very cleanly molded, negligible amounts of flash, parts are very crisp, incredible amount of detail, decals, some of the best I've ever seen. The instructions are an absolute work of art in of themselves. Definitely a quality kit. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss our eventual build review of Billy Bishop's beautiful blue-nosed biplane. If you haven't picked one up already, you can get this kit at the Wheels Wings e-store. Link down in the description below. Thank you very much. Catch you next time.